So hello from my side as well. My name is Sebastian. I'm from Germany, Munich. I'm a freelancer working with Java. And today I want to talk about putting hypermedia back in REST with JAXRS. So who of you has been using REST in production or in projects? Hands up. Who of, who of you has been using REST? Only a few? Okay, who of you has been using JAXRS in, in Java E? Oh yeah, very good. Oh, at least a few. <laughs> All right. So uh, what I want to show you first um, is about REST APIs in real-world projects, or at least what is considered to be REST. Because often um, what I see in projects is not like what should be REST APIs. So maybe you have seen something like this. Um, this uh, that is supposed to describe an HTTP call, like you have a post HTTP method for a resource, do some action, with a request body and a response body. And the URL here describes in fact a word or a verb or an action, like do something or make something, with certain inbound and outbound parameters. Like you always have this request object and this response object, right? And if you look at that, it doesn't really feel like a REST API with resources rather than just a method call over HTTP, like a remote procedure call. And this is probably not what you should do like. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you call a method uh, like do something or even retrieve information, like get some information here, which obviously should be a get, HTTP get method, rather than a post, as you want to read data, right? and REST is about resources. So what are resources in this case? Um, your application may be, l let's say you have some kind of user mani management application, right? And then you have some users in your application and your resources in your REST API should in fact reflect the your domain objects which you have, like your users. You're talking about users, you're talking about article, books, objects, you know, not verbs. And this is why you should name your resources like objects, not like verbs, like this example. This could be part of a user's management software. And you have a list of users here, which is retrieved with, uh, with a get call, right? You get a list of users, and then you get a response back. For example, it may be XML, it may be JSON or something else, it doesn't matter. But here you see the list of users, and you get several specific users, like this Duke here with an ID and a motto and something else. So now you see you have objects in your API. And now this is, for example, a list of users. It could be also that you say, oh, you only want to retrieve one user. So you probably may guess that the resource may be user slash one, two, three, four, five, something else. Make sense? All right. <laughs> so now we added some semantic HTTP. We do not have post for everything, like um, retrieving information, rather than we're using HTTP how it's meant to be, like with to get to re uh, read resources, post, uh, post to create ones, and so on and so forth. Like for this example, this shows the functionality how to create some user for that user management ex example. So now you're posting some information to a user's resource, rather than calling some action like create reuser, right? with the request body as the user how it should be reflected here on the server. So you're posting that information through that resource and a re as a response you get an HTTP status code back 201 created. So you see not everything is HTTP 200 OK rather than you have several um, HTTP status codes defined in the HTTP spec so uh, just use them and the 201 created, in fact, says that your server has now just created a new resource, which was the case here, as you created that new user. And that location is an HTTP header, pointing to that URL where that newly created user can be found. And ex this is exactly the point where hypermedia kicks in. Because uh, when you're using hypermedia in your API, it means that you link related resources together based on the um, current resource you just retrieved, right? Which are somewhat related to that resource, 
which means you have the list of user, like for this example, and now you're linking um, to the specific resources of that specific users, which means you see the different like uh, difference like before. Before that, you had the ID included there, and the ID um, and to retrieve one specific user, you kind of had that to have that implicit logic how that URL could be created, right? You had users slash one two three four five, and you had to know that the ID is a part of that URL. But the client should not make any assumptions like this, right? So rather than assuming how this URL should look like, it has to rely on these links here. So for that example, the server includes a link with a self relation, and the self relation tells the client that this link here is part of the duke of that user, and the URL is telling the client where to find that specific user. So now the client can iterate through that users, and if it found the um, desired user, it can just follow that URL and get to the resource where that user resides. Make sense? So now the server is in, uh, back uh, in control of the URLs because the client does not make any assumption. And now the server can even change the URLs without breaking the client, right? Because you're not longer relying on some URL scheme rather than you're every time you're just following the links which get returned from the server. Everything clear? Do you have any questions? Oh, I forgot to mention, if you have any questions anytime, don't hesitate to ask, just interrupt me and say something, and you even get rewarded for interrupting me. So we brought you some nice stickers from our night hacking tour. You can uh, ask questions anytime, and you will get a sticker from Steve. Sounds good, huh? So you just have to be brave and ask questions if you have any. Feel free to challenge me. <laughs> All right. So now we have these links included in our resources. And here's another example. This may be not a user's management rather than a bookstore, something like Amazon. Do you have Amazon? In yeah, you do in Japan, I know. So for example, some bookstore like Amazon, you have, this may be the resource of one book with a name, an ISBN, an author, an availability, a price, and something else plus that links again, you just saw before. This example is in JSON, but it doesn't matter. Now we have that self-relation again, right? Pointing to the same resource. But the interesting new thing here is that add to cart link. That is the add to cart functionality where the resource resides, where you can post some information when you want to add some book to your shopping cart. Because now you can tell the client Okay, where do I find that URL where I can actually add some items to my shopping cart? And now, let's imagine the following. You have, you have your client which uses your API, and the client should display a fancy Add to Cart button, like a shopping cart icon. But maybe you only want to include that icon in your client if, let's say, the book is available, or your user has some, a certain credit on his account, right? So only in certain um, situations, not always. And rather than duplicating your business logic to the client side, where you say, oh, only if availability equals in stock or something, then display that button, you're now relying only on that links you got back from the server. Which means if and only if that add to cart link was included in your response, then the client should in fact display that button here, which means now you don't have to duplicate your business logic to the client by using hypermedia, by using these links, but only if you include these links, then you tell the client, you know, that string adds to cart, and only if that string is part of the resource plus that URL, then please do something. And now the client doesn't have to duplicate that logic, and the server gets back even more control from using hypermedia. Questions? Very good. So um, you now may have the question, if I have that link to the add to cart functionality, then this may probably not be a link where you can fire a simple get call, right, to retrieve some information, but rather than you want to make a post 
and to make a post you may need some more information like which content type do I need to post or actually which HTTP method do I need to use is it post is it something else or which fields or what XML should I post there or what JSON data how does that look like and so you need may need some more control how your functionality could be used here right so something like this and um, consider that as the part of that books resource we just said be, uh, uh, saw before with the links and below there may some other property called actions and now this describes how this is another example a more complex example how that add to cart functionality may be used like saying oh I want to see that HTTP method post here I want to have that URI, uh, URL used, the shopping cart. I want to have application JSON. I want to see these properties in the JSON, these fields, and so on and so on. So now the client knows how to use that without needing to have having implicit logic up front, like a documentation, how that should be used. Because normally, um, and what uh, this is wha uh, how your rest resources probably was used in production, right? Like you have a documentation with all the resources and how they should be used, right? Like, please post this URL using that information, right? With an XML, it has to look this and that way, right? Or not? Or did you have any other way how your APIs was described? You probably had some documentation, right? And this is, in fact, a way to, to have a self-explanatory way in your API as this kind of documentation is part of the API. So the way how you use your API is actually included in your API. So now the client can, just as uh, like the links before, use that information to make use of your API, to do that certain functionality, like this add to cart link. And now the client only has to know that add to cart, the name here, the name of the functionality, and where the uh, information of the fields come from. So you see a field ID, that may be the book ID, something, and you see a field quantity, that may be how many books do you want to add to your shopping cart, right? And the client has to know where that logic comes from. And this is certainly client logic, because the quantity may be a drop-down field, like I want to have one, two, three, four books, maybe, and the ID is may, part, uh, may be part of the resource, right? And now you can change even now the server even has more control how to, uh, that it can change how the resources are used, right? Because the client only relies on a small set of things right now and uses the information it gets back from the server each time. So now you have even more control on the server side and it's less probable that your client breaks when you change something. Um, yeah, the examples I showed, this was a siren content type. So um, about content types, there are several hypermedia enabled content types which are more or less standardized. So there isn't one which has one so far, so there is not one big standard. There are many attempts to, to do this. Uh, most of them are in JSON. So this is all a valid JSON, but in a certain structure. You know, it has to be a certain schema, like the siren example, which I showed before. Um, the first one, hell, is also widely used. It has less um, control and less power than Siren. It uh, doesn't have, in the default variant, it doesn't have the ability to um, provide these actions with post and more descriptive way how to do this. And the other ones are also quite interesting. JSON Schema, for example, um, has the possibility to describe your domain entities. So you may want to have a look at these hypermedia enabled content types in that in that list. So do you any do you have any questions left regarding hypermedia in general? Please feel free to ask questions. You get nice uh, stickers. Don't forget. Everyone uh, wants to have a needs a uh, sticker, so please ask questions. Yes, please. Um, hell, that is um, an hypermedia format, uh, so a content type. Um, it uses JSON, or actually I think it can be used at JSON and XML. So the question was, what is hell, the first one? And 
It is a hypermedia-enabled content type, like the siren. So this example I showed, this is partly siren. And hell is another one. So just Google hell ap um, hypermedia content type and you will find it. But I will, uh, would actually recommend to look at siren more, so or, or to use siren. But thank you very much for your questions. You got your sticker. So everyone else, you see, when you ask any questions, you get stickers from Steve. All right, so you can qu ask questions anytime. So as the title of the talk is putting hypermedia back in REST with JAXRS and Java E technology, um, we of course want to implement something right now. So let's do that. I will use um, Java E7 together with Java 8. Um, so let's add a default Maven project. We will use Maven to build all that stuff. And I will use just a simple um, Maven archetype to create that project quickly. So we do everything from scratch that you see here is no magic and nothing prepared. And I will now create that project using that content type. And that's it. And I will furthermore use IntelliJ to open this hypermedia. Oops. Let's do that again. Okay, hmm. just um, yep. I know what uh, what was the problem. I weren't in the correct folder. Yeah, we you will see it in a minute. Sorry, I will just increase the pro um, size. I just need to open that project. Yeah, I will shortly increase the font size. So this is a newly created Maven project. It uses plain Java E7. Who of you has been using Maven in production to build projects? Nobody, at least one. That has to be more. Maven, come on. Maven is so widely used. Yeah, a little bit more. Very good. Okay, um, this is my Maven POM file. And as you can see, it's almost empty. We only have one dependency for the Java E7 API. And this is, in fact, provided. So it won't end up in your WAR file, which means your WAR file will only contain the classes we write right now which is very good because we don't need any third-party dependencies and our WAR file will be very small. I'll show that in a minute. And this means we will now include a JAXRS resource. For now, we only have that JAXRS configuration here. It is the bootstrap for our um, JAXRS application. And now we will write a resource called books resource because we will be talking about books. And to activate the JAXRS root resource, we need to have the add path annotation, starting with books here, bigger. All right. And we will need a get response. So now we will um, code the example which I showed on the slides, which means we have the books resource returning books with links, which means we have a list of books here because this will be the first response. And of course we have to create all these classes. No. So we will now create a book class 
this will be just a simple Pojo returned in our Juxa REST resource, right? So our book will have an ID, what we had before, right? Um, a name, an author, and let's say a price. Oh, by the way, please don't do money calculations with floating point numbers in real world uh, projects, right? This is just an example. All right, we will add some getters and setters and just for convenience, a custom constructor as well. So this is very simple, just a pojo. And this will be returned in a list of books in our Jaxa REST resource, and it will be returned as JSON. So we add the add produces annotation with a media type, and this will tell the Jaxa REST implementation that we want JSON here. So as soon as you access the resource, you will get JSON data. And as this is a Java E project, we probably want to retrieve our books from an EJB, right? So we inject an EJB, let's call it bookstore. And of course, we create that class as well. But this is nothing special. This time, this is just an almost empty EJB with add stateless on it, which creates the books for us because this is a simple example. Normally, you probably would read the book f uh, books out of a database, right? But here, they will just be simply created. Let's create a book here named Java, written by Duke, 999, and another one with ID2, Hello World, and that's it. Because the EJB should be very simple. And another method, which we will use later, which um, creates one book based from an ID. We will need that for the second um, resource in a minute. This is what we do here is just like dummy data uh, for the sake of the example. This is nothing special. The interesting part for now is on the JuxRS site here. So we will read the books from the EJB here, right? And return the books. And that's basically it. But this is way too simple and it's way too boring because it doesn't include hypermedia yet, right? And because what I showed in the example here, something like this, we want to have a book, or this is a user, but it doesn't matter, with links on it, right? We want to have links to some sa um, special resources and want to know how Juxares can help us creating these links. So let's include links here. We will use um, the links inside of the uh, POJOs here for simplicity. So in the POJO, we will add a map from string to URIs. These are the relations. This is the string to the actual URIs where the um, resource resides. So we call that links. And this will be a hash map. Nope. Normal hash map. And um, although our example will be in JSON, all of the JSON implementations make use of JAXB annotations if you want to modify the JSON output. So even if it's not XML, you can use JAXB annotations like XML element to for example, give a different name to these links here. So this uh, will do underscore links. And maybe you want to not include the ID in your JSON output, so we put transient on it, right? And some more JAXB annotations to tell them that we annotated the fields. And a nice getter and setter for our created property and that's it 
And this is still very simple. This could be a POJO or a DTO in your application. Sorry, uh, do you have a question? Okay, does it have to be bigger or? Like this? The white background. Oh, I don't like the white background. Yeah, let's see <laughs> if it gets bigger. Shall we never change the appearance? Always use dark color. Yeah, just a moment. Oh, that looks awful. <laughs> it's n better now? Yeah. Okay, for everyone on the live stream, sorry for this ugly background. <laughs> Okay. Any questions on the content yet? Okay, this is just a, a simple example using that POJO. Oh God. And okay, now we have the list of links here, right? So we want to create these links somehow. And you see, you want to have a links on books uh, slash that book ID, maybe one, two, three, four, five, just we had in the examples, right? So we need to include this here. And because we're using Java E7 with Java 8, we will use fancy lambdas and streams. So we will use a stream and for each. And for each book, we will do something. Like we will retrieve the links map here and put a new created self URI there. Makes sense? So we have the string relation self in this case, like in these slides and plus the URI, which will be created right now. And how do you we cr uh, create that URI? We do not want to um, repeat ourselves all over again by writing something slash books slash that ID concatenated, but actually JuxRS has a really nice functionality here, which can be injected as a context, context manage object using at context, and is called URI info. And this is a very helpful class to create URIs in a programmatic way using the JuxRS information which is already there. So if we call get base URI builder and say path with a class name on it, it will go to that class at runtime and search for the annotation at path and take this string here and build a URI with that path out of it. Which means this uses the books here out of that JuxRS resource and builds a URI then. And as we have another method down there, which I just write as well, which is the method for one single book. You rem remember this is the list of all books, like slash books. And if we have slash books slash one, two, three, four, five, this will be that JuxRS method using some ID as a path parameter, right? And we'll have one book called get book with a path parameter called ID, right? And I will implement that in a minute. But just for now, we can use that method as well using, oops, using path with the books resource class and a string with the name of that method, which means now it will search that method in that class here and use this path, right? So we actually can construct our URIs without needing to repeat ourselves all over again. And now we have slash books slash that ID, but of course we do not want to have that curly bracket ID curly bracket, rather we want to have the real ID, right? So when we construct the URI using the build method, we can use get some give some arguments which will then be used to substitute all of the path parameters in the right order. So we call that with book.getID and this will be replaced on the fly and then a URI will be created out of it, which will be then included in our links map. Questions?
twice, yes, because we have two different paths. The first one is s uh, books, right? And the second path, this is a subpath, is the ID, because we have two add path annotations. So for e every part and, and every add path annotation, you need the dot path method. Very good question. Thanks. You get a sticker. Exactly. Yeah, and this will be the point where you outsource all that into a um, uh, separate functionality, like a separate method or a separate class even, right? So you call that method o um, only once with a nicer name, and then it includes all dot .path calls and con constructs your URI, right? Very good. Thanks for your question. Any other questions? You can think of questions while I implement the second method here from the get book. So this will return only one book using the uh, information from the EJB again. And basically we can copy paste all that logic. This happens if we do not make things like we just talked about, like using one specific component. But for now it is okay to repeat ourselves. Um, so this example we will create just only one book and we will return that book as well. So now what did we do? Here we called the EJB to give us all the books. We used the streams to um, take every book and create the self URI for each book using that JAXRS resource um, helper and the IDs here to, uh, to add the URIs with the self relation and then return that list of books which will be then automatically created into JSON because we stated produces application JSON here. So sounds good. Hopefully it works. So oops, we need to go to the wrong thing. So as we're using Maven to build that thing, we will um, call Maven clean install which is actually very fast. This will uh, compile our project and build it to a WAR file. And as we're using Java E7 without any third-party dependencies, this is very fast, much faster than I can talk. And because our WAR file is basically empty here, you can see it. This only contains the classes we just wrote and nothing else. And everything else is contained on the server because the Java E7 uh, compliant server already knows the Java E7 APIs so don't we don't need to include them and this is very good because we get fast build times and very tiny build artifacts and if you have a look at that it, it has only 6k this is nothing compared to megabytes of other frameworks right so now we will deploy the whole thing on our application server and as I said the deployment artifact is tiny, so it's already deployed and running. And we can now use a REST client of our choice to query that JAXRS things. Normally, I would use um, Postman for that. Actually, it doesn't matter what, uh, what REST client you use. You could use whatever functionality which understands HTTP. It doesn't matter at all. I would use Postman, but then everybody complains about the font sizes again, so I will use um just a command line as i said it doesn't matter whatever you use so we could use curl just as simple as possible it runs on local host 8080 port the name was juxtres hypermedia resources was um, the juxtres application name and we had books right so this is our json which looks awful if we do not um, let's do some hack here to pretty print it and this is the list of our books right so now we have the books with all the information we just created this is the information from the EJB and this is the just created URIs which comes from the JAXRS functionality the URI info here with a link to book one and two and of course we can also query the specific links here if we follow that URI, and now we have only one book created in our response. Questions so far? 
So this is a very simple example of hypermedia. So um, for now, if we do want to make something more exciting, like this, where you may need more control over your res uh, response, right? So if you use some hypermedia-enabled content type, like the hell one or siren or any other content type, you may invite your own, it doesn't matter, you may need more flexibility how your response looks like and your JSON looks like, right? So uh, if you have some nested content type here with actions and fields and something else, you may need a very big POJO with all the data in it, right? And this is very cumbersome to create it at some point. So I will show you another uh, method how to do this, also using just plain Java E7. And therefore we will delete everything again and rewrite from scratch because now we will use something called JSON P. Who has heard of JSON P? Oh, at least only one, maybe two. Okay, um, JSON P is also contained in the Java E7 umbrella standard. It is a, j a standard to um, process JSON data using a programmatic API, which means you can create JSON objects in a programmatic way, which is very helpful for what we're trying to do. So then our response uh, resource method here will now return a JSON array rather than a POJO. And this JSON array is in, f uh, in fact an array of JSON data which can be created programmatically. So now we um, ask our EJB again to g give us the books here and we will create a stream and of course we will use lambdas again to map our books to in this case JSON objects. So therefore let me show you there is a method called create object builder out of the JSON class which creates an object builder where in a builder pattern like fashion you can create these JSON objects like add something with a name and a value which will be the property in your JSON. So for example we had the name of the book right coming from book.getName we had maybe an author from the author right a price and of course the links again and now as you can see I'm specifying the property names of that JSON so actually I could write whatever I want so I have the full control over how the JSON looks like and now this of course will be a nested link here so what we are trying to do is something like this creating the JSON output with this nested object here, which was uh, before the map of the URIs. So this, of course, will be the your um, no, sorry, this will be the JSON object because it is another nested uh, nested object created with the same functionality, create object builder, and this time we will use. Um, the same things again to create that self-relation with a URI. And the URI, unfortunately I deleted it, will be created in the same way with the JAXRS functionality URI info, right? So we use the same way just as before with the books resource class and the method get book. which will be also built using the ID out of the book, right? So this is just the same as before. Now the URI was um, created here and JSONP doesn't um, support URIs directly so you have to convert it to a string. This will be then a string describing your URI which will then be built into a nested JSON object here. So this is then your JSON object which will be included as a nest nested JSON object in your book JSON object which will then be built and returned in your map lambda function. Make sense so far? Do you have questions?
So now we programmatically created a JSON object out of the information which we got from our book, Pojo. And now we have a stream of JSON objects. So now we need to collect that stream into um, a stream of JSON arrays, or actually into a JSON array. And of course, just because we can, we'll use fancy method handles here. JSON array builder and JSON array builder colon colon add. JSON array builder colon colon add. This will create a JSON array builder out of it and for each JSON object it will be added to that JSON array, array builder. And then at the end we will call build to make a JSON array out of it and then we will return the whole thing in our method here. Questions? So what did we do? We called our EGAB just like before. We created a stream out of our POJOs, a stream of books. Then we mapped the stream of books to a stream of JSON objects using this programmatic approach. And at the end we collected the stream of JSON objects into a JSON array. And then we returned the whole thing. And for the second method it is basically the same. Just that we have only one JSON object and of course I will copy paste again and this is the part where you see it makes sense that you may um, create a separate component like a CDI managed bean for that functionality how your JSON object is created right so you have a maybe an entity builder something which then gets called like create book and contains all the logic so you don't have to repeat yourself all over again what I'm just doing so it's the same as before. We will call the EJB to give us only one book. And then out of that book, we will create the um, info for only one JSON object containing all that data. So now we have the URI again and the links, nested JSON object, and only one JSON object created out of it. And maybe for that example, we want to include the add to card link here as well. And as I said before, this URI may only be included, for example, if some business logic matches. So you could write, if something, then please include this URI to a JSON object, right? And now we will do the same thing with, let's call it card, re card resource if I could spell and this doesn't exist yet this will be another JAXRS resource but actually it doesn't matter this is just for the sake of the example called shopping cart that JAXRS can use this to access that information here but we don't even need to implement that so I will close it immediately I will just need it to reference that method uh, to that class right and now we will create the second URI. Um, let's call it card URI. And here we will now include that as the add to card relation. Card URI dot to string, right? So now our JSON links object um, contains that URI as well, which will then be added to the whole JSON object questions so far so now let's run this example as well um, we will stop stop the application server we will rebuild that project from scratch and just as before we still have no dependencies so it's still very fast we will redeploy it on Wildfly and this will be also still very fast and it's done. And now we will call the same resource again. Oops, expecting value. Sources books. Okay, this time it didn't work. As you can see, everything is. Oh! Get books. Not no public path annotated method. Oh! Yeah, as you, as you can see. 
I did a typo. So there's nothing prepared. Everything is live, so everything can happen. Um, I did a typo here, and this is exactly um, the point. If you point to some method using a string here, then that method, of course, has to exist like this. But the getBooks method also exists. But why did it fail? That getBooks method does not have an add path annotation on it. And this functionality, dot path, needs some add path annotated methods or classes, of course, to retrieve that information. So I did a typo. I wrote get books. Oh, and here as well, of course, because I copy pasted it. And now it um, points to the correct method. So let's rebuild it. And hopefully this time it works. Yes. So what do we need? Um, a clean install every time. Uh, it depends how you build your project. So I recommend to do a clean build, uh, really a build from scratch every time, because then you don't get any caching issues. Like if you build like part of that project and then may you may forget to, if you have a multi-module project, to compile the first part. And if the pro first part was changed, then you get mismatches. So I recommend to stay very lean with no dependencies. And it doesn't matter if your project gets very big, because then it's still very fast, because you don't need to add some megabytes of uh, external dependencies. And then you can take a clean um, install or clean package every time. Very good question. He gets a sticker. <laughs> All right. So it was built. Now we will redeploy it. And hopefully this time it works. So it's done. Yay, it works. So here, as you can see, it's the same just as before. It was the same example. So it um, also returns some JSON data. But this time, the JSON data was created with the programmatic approach using the JSONP API. And if we query now um, a resource of one specific book, you will see that we have two links right now because we're uh, in the second method and the add to cart functionality is included in the link as well. And this was of course also created from that URI info class and added with the JSONP functionality. Questions? Everything clear? Very good. So let me show you another cool feature of Juxres. Um, and what was the reason why I used the dot get base URI builder to um, call that builder pattern here? And what JuxRS provides out of the box is that it reads some client um, HTTP um, client request data. So, for example, if I change the domain here with the local domain which I included in my local host file. So this, in fact, points to localhost as well. But now you will see that this information is used to create that links as well. Because we called the dot get base URI builder here, which in fact uses the information out of the HTTP request, the current HTTP request we sent, which is very helpful if you have an enterprise project with a proxy server up front which is mostly the case with an Apache or an Nginx or something, something like that, which has the real domain of your API. And you don't need even need to configure anything here because it uses the real client request data, which was sent originally to your proxy server, and creates the actual URIs how you want them to be in your resource. If you just stay lean and um, go with the JuxRS way how these URIs can be created. So this is very helpful as well. Questions? So now you see um, that we used a programmatic approach, how the JSON response could look like. And now you see that something like this is then very easy to do. Because however you want your content type or your response to look like, you now have the full control using JSONP, for example, to do everything you like in your JSON data and to create crazy complex resources um, and responses here for every JSON content type on the planet. 
So let me show you a GitHub project of mine. This is called JaxRS Hypermedia. And this, in fact, has somewhat similar examples, a little bit more complex. Here it also talks about books and bookstores. And as you can see, this also uses Siren to create some resources. And this is, in fact, um, a documentation how a potential API could look like, plus, of course, the implementation in plain Java E, or actually in several Java E approaches. So this is a more complex example. I showed some snippets out of it in my presentation. And as you can see, what I explained before, um, it also uses JSONP to create that crazy complex JSON here in the Entity Builder. And this is a class which you probably would do in your um, real-world projects as well. So this is only that single point of responsibility, how your response is created which means you say something like build book here and internally it includes all that data you want to have in that CDI managed bean. So you only need to inject that bean if you want to create some JSON data and this is the single point of responsibility where all your code resides for that approach. And the project has several approach uh, approaches. It also includes um, a third party dependency to do the same job but I would advise you to stay in as lean as possible with Java E projects and maybe have a look at that project. It's on my GitHub account, sdashner slash Juxores Hypermedia. And it shows a more complex uh, examples of what I introduced here in my presentation. So do you have any questions left for Hypermedia in general or Juxores in particular? Still, you get uh, stickers. <laughs> so if you don't have any questions left, then thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>